Joining me now to discuss all of this, Republican Senator Bob Corker, chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee and the pride of Chattanooga. Senator, thanks for being here. I want to get to that Brexit vote okay. in, in a sec. But first, I, I do have to ask you about something going on within the Republican Party. Scowcroft and uh, Paulson saying that they're going to vote for Hillary. George Will saying he's leaving the Republican Party over Donald Trump. This must really disturb you. Well, look, those are all people that I highly respect and have worked with some of them very, very closely. I, I will point out that in the Brexit uh, vote that you are going to talk to in just a moment, uh, almost the entire establishment uh, in the UK was in the Remain camp. So, look, there's something happening uh, in our society. It's happening in Western societies where there's tremendous anxiety over e economic stagnation. Uh, the whole issue of refugees and immigration that's changing the context of countries and then this faceless bureaucracy that's not really responding to to people and so uh, the genius of what's happened uh, with, with the tr candidacy of Donald Trump is he has given voice to that just as was given in, in the UK recently and the question is can you take that and do something that's very, very constructive for our country? So I understand there's a lot of turmoil, a lot of people taking different positions. Those are people that I respect. But the question is, can we take this moment and shape it into something that is great for the American people? Let's talk about Brexit. The UK obviously voting okay. to leave the European Union. You said, quote, a free people should choose their own way. But given that the vote threw financial markets into chaos, sent the down tumbling more than 600 points, do you think that the Brits voted the right way? Was this the wise path? You know, Jake, I meticulously stayed out of it. I was very offended uh, when the foreign ministers of UK, France, Germany, and of the EU were in the United States trying to count, you know, shape uh, senators' opinions of the Iran deal. So I stayed out of this. Obviously, the context of the European Union is going to change without the UK being a part of it. They added some polarity and made it something that was more US centric, if you will. On the other hand, I'd be less than honest if I didn't say that this creates for me uh, uh, some anticipation and a degree of excitement in that if seeing what has happened there can cause uh, Western civilization, if you will, to realize that the direction we're going is not a good direction. I think so it's our job to make something good out of this. Um, to make comments about them going to the back of the queue, sort of sophomore threats. I mean, the fact is, if anything, my guess is the response of the American people is going to be to draw closer uh, to Great Britain, to the United Kingdom, or whatever is left of that. So, look, it's our job to make something happen out of this that is very good. My sense is we're going to be able to do it, and it's going to take a long time, Jake. I mean, you're talking about one country dealing with 27 countries that in some ways are dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. This is going to take place over many, many years, and my sense is something very, very good can come out of this. Well, let me ask you, because you just talked about you didn't like uh, foreign ministers from other countries trying to shape yeah. the, your view about the Iran deal, um, and then you noted that President Obama took the unusual step of lobbying the UK against Brexit. Right. Let's play that tape of what he said back in April okay. while visiting London. I think it's fair to say that maybe some point down the line there might be a, a UK-US trade agreement, but it's not going to happen anytime soon because our focus is in negotiating with a big block, the European Union, to get a trade agreement done. And UK is going to be in the back of the queue. Now, here was yeah. the reaction from the leader of the Brexit movement, Nigel Farage. Take a listen to this. Our friends in Washington do not want us to be an independent, self-governing, democratic nation. Uh, they want us to be part of a political union in Europe. Well, who cares what they want? Do you think President Obama may have played a role in fueling the Brexit movement? You know, I don't think anybody, uh, I know I did not respond well, uh, for instance, when, uh, when Prime Minister Cameron was doing what he was doing in our country relative, again, to the Iran deal. We had personal conversations about it. I did not appreciate it. 
Uh, I don't imagine the people uh, of UK appreciated much uh, another president from another country weighing in, but I really can't uh, say what, how it affected the dynamics within the country. Uh, what I do know is that, uh, you know, change is underway and, and it's our job, it's my job as chairman of the Foreign Relations Committee and others to, uh, to make something very, very good come out of this and that's my goal. Donald Trump was in Scotland on Friday for the reopening of his golf course and resort. He believes that Obama's c comments may have played a role in Brexit. Brexit. He also had this to say about the falling British pound. Take a listen. Look, if the pound goes down, they're going to do more business. You know, when the pound goes down, more people are coming to Turnberry, frankly. And the pound has gone down. And uh, let's see what the impact of that has. The Clinton campaign says that's the exact wrong reaction for an American leader. They say he's putting his own pocketbook first. And leaders have to actually put, uh, they've actually put these remarks in a new television ad. And, and leaders have to take the, the position of, of, of more broadly looking at voters and, and people. What did you think of that comment? You know, I was able to see this event uh, live, which is unusual. I thought it was one of his best events. I'm sorry. I know I'm an outlier based on polling that I've seen you do, but I thought it was one of his best events. I mean, here he was as a business person, an outsider. He happened to be in the country uh, when the Brexit, right after the Brexit vote had taken place supporting his children uh, and uh, demonstrating that he was an outsider. So I thought his answers, I know he began talking about the, the development itself. Uh, he knew reporters were gonna ask him about Brexit. Uh, I thought it was one of his best events and uh, I, I didn't take it that he was, he was giving an example, uh, which is obvious that uh, when the currency fluctuates as it does, I mean, more Americans are gonna be able to travel to the UK uh, more cheaply, some of their exports uh, may may go at greater value. I thought it was just demonstrating, uh, you know, uh, uh, an anecdotal uh, statement relative to, to the, its effects. So uh, I, again, I thought it was one of his better events. It's been just two weeks since the deadliest mass shooting in the modern history of the U.S. There was a lot of action on Capitol Hill this week on gun control. The Senate voted on a measure by your fellow Republican Senator Susan Collins that would allow the Justice Department to block people on two key federal terror lists from purchasing firearms with a chance to appeal if somebody was wrongly included on one of the lists. Eight Republicans voted for the measure. You voted against it. I think a lot of yeah. Americans watching and the overwhelming body of the American people, including Republicans, want people on the terror watch list to be banned from buying guns. They feel that, you know, somebody put accidentally on the list is not more important than keeping guns out of the hands of, say, the 50,000 people suspected to have ties to Al-Qaeda who are on the list, or the 73,000 people uh, to, suspected to have ties to Al-Qaeda in Iraq. What do you say to them? Well, I was working very closely with Susan Collins, and I want to tell her, I want to say she did a, a Herculean job in trying to pull people together. I think people may have missed what the Johnson Amendment said, where it would actually, it had a series of things that would keep uh, uh, hand, guns out of the hands of terrorists for 27 days while law, law enforcement officials were able to do their job. Um, at one point, Susan's bill was going to have an upfront determination, and uh, I think had she been able to get there, I think those negotiations broke down. But I think she would have ended up with a very, very good piece of legislation. And Jake, I, I don't think this is over. My guess is we're going to continue to work on it. Um, I will say again, if you go back and look at the Johnson bill, nobody really wanted to study that, but uh, it was really, really good. And uh, my sense is that between the nuance of his bill and her bill, there's still a place that we can get to that protects Second Amendment rights, but also ensures that we keep guns out of the hands of terrorists. So I, I don't think it's over yet. At least I hope it's not. Senator Bob Corker, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Jack.